Okay, so I think we all do need a stretch break. Uh, particularly as now we are going to move into something indeed that is more linked to embodiment. Uh, I'm looking into those lights and uh, I do hope that uh, Marlis, yes, I can see her, and Kiveli both please come forward. Here comes the music. And um, of course, uh, we all know that uh, music is something that can indeed, as art, can affect our minds and change us towards something better and elevate our consciousness. But usually we associate this type of music either with uh, Eastern music or as we will see with uh, Christopher King, with uh, music that has to do with uh, our traditional musics in our communities. Uh, but here we are going to speak about, and not speak, but just hear also, uh, classical music. Because classical music is what Marlis does in her singing and Kiveli in her playing the piano. So I'm very happy to hand over to those ladies. First for you know, explaining a few things for those who will not participate in the embodied experience. And uh, for the others, you will just listen for, for what they have to tell you. Marlis, thank you for being here. We know that you are in full rehearsal for the Human Requiem. So we appreciate particularly that you take the time to be with us here. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you. It's very kind. Thank you very much. Yes, so um, right after this, I think some of you have, uh, are going to join us right over there to have the um, musical transformational experience together with us that we are very excited for. But for all of you who will not participate, um, we are very happy to give you a short taste of what we mean or what we envision when we think about the boundless potential of music for inner transformation in a way that maybe speech or other acts have no chance to get to in its potency. Um, so we are going to first talk a bit about why why we think that music or art in general is, um, well, has basically a unique place in this general goal. Um, and also for those of you that will experience it, give you some pointers about what exactly you can ex expect. I, I think I saw some of you already look in the back there and it, it's not really set up like a normal classical concert. So we're going to give you um, some pointers about what you can expect and what exactly we're going to do together. So I think that as artists, but especially as musicians, we are very naturally in contact with all the components of the lived experience that don't correspond to pragmatic or replicable scientific principles. Um, we humans are made up of a huge irrational part that, and a huge intangible energetic part that is very hard to get a hold of or to control or to sometimes really work with because, as I said, it does not correspond to replicable principles. We don't know that every time where we eat an apple we are in a good mood. We don't know that every time where we listen to this song we're going to instantly feel better. Sometimes it works, often it works maybe, but not always. There are so many parts inside of us, moving parts, psychological parts, spiritual parts, that um, are very difficult for us to grasp. And there are types of actions, I think, that help us move closer to make these intangible parts more tangible. And these actions are symbolic actions and also rituals. If we think of certain things that we do, we light a candle in a church to feel closer to maybe a loved one who has passed away. There's no scientific uh, guarantee that that loved one somehow is closer because we do it, but we do it and it feels that way. We are sure that in that moment, by thinking of them and doing that action, we somehow create a moment of intimacy with someone. We make New Year's Eve resolutions as if somehow the 31st of December has more potential to uh, create change in our lives than let's say the 3rd of July. We are somehow sure that because the year changes, if we make the resolutions, then there is a higher chance that we might create change in our lives. Generally, however, I think that in Western modern society, the power of ritual or even the position of ritual 
has kind of lost its place. I don't think that we really allocate an organized time, for example, in our day for ritual, for these symbolic acts. I think, if anything, most of us view them as maybe uh, things that are more to be ridiculed or indulgences, things that don't really make a big difference and therefore are a waste of time. I think that especially most very successful and driven people, when they wake up in the morning, they would think that much more sensible to write the first work email before breakfast than, for example, to sit down, light a candle, close their eyes, and think of three things they're grateful for today. A ritual I try to do every morning, sitting down, remembering what I'm grateful for, to position myself more positively towards the day than, for example, negatively. So, um, these rituals have always been very important. I think especially in ancient, ancient civilizations, there was a part of the tribe or of the, um, of the society that was specifically there to create those rituals for the people and create those benefits for the people, the benefits of spiritual transformation and nourishing the parts of yourself that are hard to grasp in everyday life. I think the mysteries that were in, uh, in Elefsis were these type of rituals and therefore so incredibly um, sought after by people that lived at the time. All these rituals, what they seem to have in common was that an integral part was music. The performing of music, the experiencing of music, the listening of music. Music kind of seems to accompany any ritual that we can think of, even the religious rituals that we know of, of the younger history than ancient Greece, for example. And not only just music in general, but especially the voice, especially singing seemed to be incredibly important to many rituals. And Mali, since you are a very, very amazing <laughs> singer and have probably um, you know, dealt with the voice in a, on a level that most of us couldn't even dream of, um, can you maybe ex just uh, tell from your experience what makes the voice so unique? I try to. May I sit down for that? Uh, yeah, then Great, I finally. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. As you said already, um, rituals, emotions, uh, and the voice is a unique instrument in that way that it is inside of our body. It's not outside and you play it, it's a part of your whole system. It is connected to the emotions, it is connected to your whole being, it's connected to the moods that you are in, it's connected to all the illnesses you have. So this is why the voice has a very special vibration, let's say. Yeah. And uh, I remember always when we, I talk about this, um, a friend of mine who had a sentence that I liked very much. He said, the beginning of every tone is in the heart. And so the voice is very close to the heart and everything that I sing or try to address in a higher way with notes and tones starts from here. And this is why it, uh, it overwhelms me, myself sometimes, as well as also the listener, because it's the direct way into your heart. And uh, this is the beauty uh, of the singing, of course, also the difficulty, because uh, when you are not in a good shape, it can happen that you cry on stage. Uh. <laughs> um, something that has always fascinated me, and we spoke already a bit about before, um, and I want to ask also for, for the benefit of everybody here. Um, singing is something that, hypothetically speaking, we all can do. Um, anyone can sing, anyone has a voice. Nevertheless, um, singing in public, if you're not a professional, and if you don't feel like you have a good voice, is something that fills most of us, including myself, with embarrassment. I think you spoke about this um, experiment that you had done in a, in a previous gathering, where you were trying to find the, 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 the like, to, to try to create a note with everyone involved. And I was thinking about it, and you were saying how difficult it was because everyone was a bit shy, and I was thinking, even though I am a musician and I should feel the most comfortable to move in this space, I myself would feel pretty shy. I mean, if you would say, sing your note, I would think to myself, uh, is it like deep, is it high, is it, is it in my belly, do I have to like get it from the throat, from the nose, and I just wouldn't know. And yet it's something so natural 
that we have a very like uh, intimate relate like it feels so intimate it feels like you can't do it in front of strangers yeah exactly that's what you say you know it's we put too much brain into it you know if um, and again what i said before because it's so connected to us as human beings you feel ashamed because it reveals you you know when you have problems and or if you are for example if you are a liar and you betray people, you know, I can hear it in your voice somehow. The voice can show many different things. Or, oh, yesterday I was shopping in this wonderful hall and, you know, I had such a nice dress. It was an amazing thing. So from the voice you can hear everything. And when you are like, when you're a good uh, instinctive person, you understand. And that's why people feel ashamed. Also, they feel ashamed because they, they might not esteem themselves as worthy or they compare with the others that the voice is nicer or whatever. But I thought about something that maybe each of you can find in yourself because it's difficult to say, okay, now sing a note. But you can find you have to first understand the note that you sing is not uh, the professional note that a singer sings on stage, but it's your tone. It's your very individual tone to start from. And for example, if you see your speaking voice, mine is like this, so the singing voice would be like this, would be my first tone. When somebody talks like that, you know, you find maybe this tone that you can sing. If you talk rather like this, and it might be here. Should we try that? Say, say, I say, you say the sentence, Eleusinian mysteries, and you see where your voice is. And now give, give it a little more note to your speaking voice. And you try to sing it a little bit. See, and a little louder, and you have created a choir now. You know, and now this is your tone, and this tone you can always use. You know, when you feel down, for example, go into your shower and sing Eleusinian mysteries. <laughs> or whatever it comes to your mind. The, the great thing also about the voice is that it connects with words. And that this is why sometimes opera is so amazing, that you get so touched by a, a fate of a person, let's say Traviata, that dies at the end. And it's this loneliness that she is singing with her expression and with her with the music of Verdi and with the text that she says, you know. Le you, everybody is leaving me alone, I'm left over. And this is so sad that everybody immediately gets a, a heavy heart. And that's why we're crying when we hear, sometimes when we hear music. And exactly here we are back to the, ex the transformation uh, that is so important to allow yourself this, this emptiness or the sadness that you have by letting the tone out, even cry with the note, you know, it's this that we have to get it out. It has to come from in us to the outside in order to heal us. Yeah. Perfect. I'm so happy that we, <laughs> that we, that we did, uh, that we were so much more successful. This you were time. great as a choir. I like I was that. <laughs> Can we do it once more? Elefsinian Mysteries. Okay. Elefsinian Mysteries. Yes, and you know, it doesn't matter if it's a harmony or not a harmony. It's your individual tone. Great. So, um, now it would maybe be a good moment to explain for everyone who's going to be there afterwards what it exactly is that we're going to do. Um, so, the idea or the vision behind this type of experience is comes from the fact that I'm just like Malis, I'm a, I'm a classical musician, a pianist, and I know that not every concert is a moving experience. Some concerts are an incredibly moving experience, and other concerts, 
you just go, you hear, it's nice, maybe you're impressed, and then you go back home and you kind of forget about it a week later. And um, I was fascinated by it because sometimes what makes a concert memorable is not necessarily the quality of the performance. It can be, but not necessarily. Sometimes, most of the times actually, it's about how you feel when you hear the concert. Whether maybe you've had a memorable day, whether you were able to shut off and focus and concentrate, or whether not, whether you had uh, news that was in your mind the entire time. So the quality of a concert, or the perceived quality of a concert, much, much more depends on how you feel when you listen to it than just about the quality of the performance, which of course also has the opportunity to move you, don't get me wrong, but you have to be receptive to it. So um, I pulled inspiration from a very different area of my life that was introduced to me through my family, which is um, a, a, a ritual that deals with transforming yourself, that had nothing to do necessarily with music, but a ritual that takes two days in which you go with the intention to change something in your life that is important to you, and then through a many, many different steps that happen, you get the chance to examine it from perspectives that you've never examined it before, and then maybe come out of it wiser, transformed, and more able to integrate change in your life that you want to. A ritual that has nothing to do with classical music, by the way. So I try to connect these two, um, these two elements, these two things in my life that I regularly experience, and create a, basically a concert ritual that um, uses music to get you into an expanded state of consciousness, into an altered state of consciousness, something we know that music can do, does not do automatically, but it can do it in an extremely potent way, and create the perfect setting in which that is possible. So, um, in a, after this, we're going to ask you to leave the room so we can prepare the room with an atmosphere that when you come back in, is gonna instantly help you get into a more introspective state of mind. And then we're going to sit down in this area over there on the mats. Um, we are going to first, all together, I'm gonna, we're gonna give you some time to find, to set an intention, to find something that you really want to work on in the next hour, that you wanna use this experience for, to get insight on, to feel transformation on, a specific intention that's going to be your guide throughout the entire experience. Um, and once you find an intention, we're gonna begin this musical journey. You're going to be lying down um, on the yoga mats over there. There's a carpet and mat, so you can make yourself comfortable. Um, you can, you're gonna lie down, and then Malis and I are gonna guide you through different types of meditations. Malis is gonna guide you through a more physical body work type of meditation, then I'm going to guide you through a 15 minute spoken meditation designed to help you get further in your intention. And then after that, there are going to be 25 minutes of music. And within this music, we would like to invite you to use all the inspiration or all the thoughts that the meditation and the body work awakened in you to go even deeper, to use the music as a catalyst to go even deeper inside your psyche, inside your thoughts, inside your psychological, emotional self. The music is gonna be about 25 minutes, so to that point, we're gonna maybe have a total of about 50 minutes, and then you're gonna have another five minutes of body work, another five to get back to kind of this space, to here and now, and then after that, um, we're going to put on some background music, which is gonna be your signal to know that the concert ritual is over. You can stand up and you can do what you like. You can either stay there a bit longer in your introspection, you can go out and talk about your experience, you can sit there in small groups and talk to each other. Whatever feels right to you in that moment, you, are, um, you can obviously respond to. So um, that's what we, what we want to do right after this. Um, I'm not sure how we are time-wise. We have the option. Okay, let's do it this way. All right, because um, then I would say um, for everyone who wants to participate, um, feel free to definitely go out now for about 10 minutes. Use the time to go to the bathroom, maybe drink some water to really not have any outer stressors so, once you come in. Sing some things. Sing some, <laughs> and then once you come back in, there are going to be some last pointers by the person at the door. And then we will wait for you here. We're very excited. Have fun. <laughs> 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 <laughs>